Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher. Let's look at how to graph quadratics when the uh, a value is not 1 or negative 1. And so we have a vertical stretch or compression that can happen. So let's uh, look at the table of values for y equals x squared. And we've done this before if you're in my class. Uh, so when x is negative 3, x squared is going to be negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. For negative 2, we have 4. For negative 1, it's 1, and then 0. And this pattern repeats. And those are the different values that we get. For first differences, we subtract. How do we get from 9 to 4? That's minus 5. To get from 4 to 1, that's going down by 3. From 1 to 0, down 1. From 0 to 1 is up 1. I'm going to put a plus sign there. From 1 to 4 is plus 3. And from 4 to 9 is plus 5. And the second differences here are all positive. From negative 5 to negative 3 is a change of plus 2. And all of the second differences will be the same. They're all positive 2. So the first differences actually tell us quite a bit about how to graph this curve. So I'm going to start at 0, 0. I'm going to have to sort of flip back and forth, so apologies for that. I'm going to start by plotting that point 0, 0. Now, what the first differences tell us is that if I'm at 0 and I want to go to the next point, I should go up 1. So from 0, I'm going to go up 1, and I'll end up at the, at the y value 1. Let me just do that right now. From 0, when I go to the next value, it will be up 1. From this value, 1, I'm going to go up 3 to get to the next value. So 1 up 3 takes us to the y value 4. So it's an increase of 3. 1 on the x, 3 on the y. So from here, I'm going to go over 1 and up 1, 2, 3. This might feel a little bit like slope of lines. This was like a rise of, sorry, a run of 1, a rise of 1. This is a run of 1 and a rise of 3. And for the next one, we have plus 5 to go from 4 to 9. So over 1 and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now that pattern, the second difference is tell us about, it increases by 1 every time. Or sorry, by 2 every time. By 2. So let me just grab a color here. For a rise of 1, sorry, I said it again. For a run of 1, we have a rise of 1 first. Then we have another run of 1, always a run of 1, and a rise of 3. Another run of 1, and a rise of 5. And if we had more room on our graph, we could go over 1 and up 7, which would take us to the value 16. I'm going to put all the mirror image points in here again. 1, 3, 5. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 3. Over 1, up 5. And notice I'm moving to the left this time. Now I'm going to draw this in as a smooth curve. Let's see how I do without bumping the camera. Ooh, not great. I'll take it though. Oh, that one was a little bit better. Okay, so there's my parabola. Not a bad curve. A little bit blurry though. There we are. This pattern, 1, 3, 5. This is an increasing pattern over here and in this direction as well. Okay. So that was essentially from yesterday, or from the last lesson that you learned in class. And so now we're going to go and do the same thing for when y equals 2 times x squared. So the, we square the x value first and then multiply it by 2. So x squared is going to be 9 times 2 is 18. I'm having some camera issues here. My apologies. Oh, my Hopefully that'll stay put for us. When x is 2, square it to get 4. Double that to get 8. Negative 1 squared is 1. Times 2 is 2. 
0 squared times 2 is 0, and then those same mirror image points right over there. Let's check out the first differences. We have to drop 10. We have to drop 6. That is a frustrating camera. To get from 2 to 0, we have to drop 2. To get from 0 to 2, we increase by 2. Then we increase by 6 and by 10. Now the second difference is to go from negative 10 to negative 6, that is an increase of 4. Here we have an increase of 4, and for all of these. That's a property of quadratic relations. The second differences are always the same number, and in this case it is a, a positive number because as we go from left to right, um, it will end up curving upwards, and this is true whenever you have a... Uh, a parabola that opens up like this. Okay, now you'll notice the second differences here are 4, and the step pattern looks very different. In the last one we had 5, 3, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5. These numbers are all exactly twice as much as the last one. So we can still use the step pattern because the first differences are the old first differences then multiplied by 2. So let's start with that. We'll begin by plotting 0, 0. We won't fit much on this graph. And then it was over 1, up 1. Now it's over 1, up 2. I'm sorry, there we are. Twice as high. It was 1. Now we've doubled it. It was over 1, up 3. Now it's over 1, up 6. 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we won't even fit the next one on the graph. It would be over 1, up 10, which would take us to 18, which is very, very high. Put in the mirror image points on this side. Oof, that was a little rough at the bottom there. Sorry about that, everybody. Smooth curve, smooth curve. And there's our graph. Now this one has been stretched vertically, so it is sort of skinnier looking, but especially it is taller. Every Y point has been moved twice as far from the x-axis, and this one of course stayed put because it was on the x-axis. So at the bottom here we can graph any quadratic relation that is in this form by multiplying the first differences by this value a, and then using the step pattern. We're one up two in this case instead of one. So practice this a little bit. Let me just do a couple of these with you right now. In this case the a value is three, so this old step pattern, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, is going to become 3, 9, 15, 21, 27. I took all of these values, the step pattern values, and multiplied them by 3. Now these are not x and y values. These, are, uh, these end up being the rise values as we graph. This one starts at 0, negative 4. So let me just plot that on the graph. Oh, you can't even see that. There's 0, negative 4. I'm going to follow my pattern, which I'll read to you. It says 3, 9, 15. So over 1, up 3. That's a point on the graph. Over 1, up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then from there, over 1, up 15. Hmm, I won't quite be able to fit that on this graph. Well, let me put in the mirror image points. And then I would graph what I can from there. Having an A value, a stretch factor of 3, it's actually quite a lot for when you use um, when you're using boxes here that have a single, like that go over by one or up by one. Uh, stretching stuff by a factor of three is uh, is pretty extreme. Okay, let's look at one more here. This one's a fraction. In this case, we have that a is negative one-half. So we multiply everything by the new a value. The step pattern was 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and now it is 1 times negative a half. 
3 times negative a half, that's negative 3 halves, and a lot of you will want to write negative 1.5. 3 halves, because it's an improper fraction, can be difficult to find on a graph. Turning it into a mixed number or a decimal value makes it a little bit easier to find. This is negative 5 halves, which is negative 2.5, negative 7 halves, negative 3.5, and negative 9 halves, which is negative 4.5. Where does this one begin? It begins at the vertex positive 3, positive 10. Okay, let me start with that. Positive 3, positive 10 is here. Now the step pattern, notice that this has been reflected because of that negative right there. And so you'll notice the step pattern, although we, did, we started with 1, 3, 5, and so on, we ended up with negative values instead. So over 1, down a half over 1 down 1 1.5, so that will be here, right, half, 1, 1 and a half, over 1 down 2.5, and then 3.5, uh, 1, 2, 3.5 is here, and then 4.5, yeah, I can fit that too, over 1 down 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. Okay, I'm going to put all my mirror image points in. It's easy to make a mistake here, so be careful when you're writing your points or plotting them. Double check some of those, make sure they look right. And this one is going to be at negative 2 and negative 2.5, so right there. Now we start to just sketch in our curve. I probably could have gone one more point there that I didn't put in my little table. Okay, so keep going from there. Here's one more for you to try. One quarter and then times x plus 2 squared. So this has a vertex of negative 2, 0, and the one quarter there is uh, the a value. So here's the first one, here's the second one and you can go from there. Okay, thanks very much.